Welcome back everybody. I have a little project today. I thought I might as well film it for you guys. I made the birds some um, dish holders a while ago and I need to make new ones. These ones are getting pretty damaged and there's some cracks in them. And so I have cut two new pieces of wood, six by 10 inches. Now, here's the problem with the last ones. I used cut off ends of boards, which means that the grain is running this way, which is what causes the splits here. And when I put these um, screws in, they can also cause the splitting as well. And so that is why I'm making new ones. And this time, instead of using leftover pieces of wood, I went and cut some that the grain goes the right way so I won't have any splitting this way. So what you'll need for this project is a piece of wood that's relative to the size of the bowls you're using. I have cut these ones at six by 10 inches, which is just a little bigger than the old ones. I just wanted to make sure I have enough space around that I don't get splitting and cracking again. Then you'll need some dowels. On this one, I've put the dowel out a little bit so that Keely's feet can go on here. And for whatever reason, at the time I made Ziggy's, I put three. And so you can decide how you want to put the perch, but they do like to have a separate little perch that they can climb up on and then probably stand on the edge of the bowl. Depends on your bird. Besides a piece of lumber, you'll need two of these bolts. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they have the sharp end on one side and the bolt end on the other. And you'll need a couple wing nuts and then you'll need an assortment of washers, two each. Depending on how fancy you want to get, on this bowl I have just made it so the bowl just sits on top. That's for Ziggy's cage, but for Keely, he's a little sneakier. He likes to take his bowls and throw them out of there and then you end up with all the food all over the bottom of the cage. So for his, I have these bowls that don't have a lip around them and I've routed a lip in the inside so those sit down way down in there. It's very difficult for him to dig the bowl out. So depending on your type of bird, you can decide which bowl works best for you. It's a good idea to have some sort of a measuring tool so that you can measure the bottom of your bowl to get a really accurate reading of where you want your bowl to sit. I have an electronic one and it's been a little while since I used it so I just replaced the battery. Luckily it came with a spare one. I really liked that idea and um, now when I turn it on and I open it up it can measure the inside or the outside very awesome gadget. I want to take a reading just at the top edge before the lip. So it's about 9.3. The tool that I'm going to be using to cut my holes is the circle cutter. It does have blades on both sides but I prefer just to use the one blade. That way you don't end up with um, a wider cut which can occur when you have your two blades not exactly in the same place. So these do move to whichever measurement so I'm going to set mine so that the total width of it is 9.4. So what I've done is I've found my center of the board, marked it, and then I found the centers of each half and just putting a mark and so that will make it easier Ugh. so that'll make it easier for your drill bit to find your hole it just helps to keep things so that uh, you don't end up with it being just a little off kilter when you're using a circle cutter you always want to cut half from one side and then turn the board over and cut the other half from the other side. That way your cuts meet up in the middle and it prevents tear out on the back side of your board. I 
I'm also going to show you another way to do the exact same thing with a hole saw. Now because they don't have precise measurements the way the circle cutter does, you'll have to sand out to the size that you actually need. Here I'm demonstrating how I cut that lip on the other side with the router. I did it off camera for safety reasons. That's a two-handed job. I'm using a roundover bit on the router and it will help to prevent Keely from chewing on the edges. It also looks really good. After a good sanding, finishing up with a little wax will help to protect the wood from water and bird droppings. It'll make it easier to clean. Using a soft cloth, you just polish it on and then buff it off. Look at that sheen.
you're enjoying the content that I'm creating, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you'll be the first to know next time I upload. Thanks for watching and happy building.